So, you have decided to get into motorcycles. Great, welcome to the elite of humans who value the freedom that the wind provides. But now you are looking for a beginner motorcycle. Now, the friends that ride, the forums, YouTube, and so many others are telling you that the best way to start is small, smaller than 500, lightweight motorcycles that will provide you comfort. Then you are told there are cruisers, dual sports, standard, sport bikes. Where does one start? Well, if you choose cruiser, for 31 years there has been an ever-present staple in the beginning small bike category. An air-cooled 234cc, 16 horsepower, 320 pound, 26.6 inch seat height Honda Rebel. The bulletproof backbone of the MSF course and cheap Craigslist motorcycles that many over the years have started to ride on and ride to this day. But this had to change. The Rebel was outdated, underpowered, and needed new life. And in 2017, we were given two new ones. The first being the Rebel 300, a 286cc liquid-cooled, 30 horsepower, 364 pound, and 27.2 inch seat height motorcycle. But Honda included a bonus. For those who are new, those who have played the game before, and those who want to have a bit more fun. And here it is, the Rebel 500. This motorcycle shares the exact same steel trellis frame, the same big tires of the Indian Scout, and the bobber looks. The same 41 millimeter front forks, the same coilovers on the rear, the same brakes, the same everything that the 300 has except this one packs a punch. A 471cc 46 horsepower weighing in at 408 pounds without ABS. And this is one fun bike. However, let's start up front here with the bad. All right, let's start out up front with this motorcycle on what is bad. First off, 41 millimeter fork sounds great very small motorcycle very large fork think that'd be great but let's be honest here I'm a bigger dude check this out come over and you sit on it look how much freaking give is in this motorcycle I mean who the heck filled this thing with cheese whiz and called it a good idea instead of a spring I mean that's exactly what has to be in these forks I mean let's be honest here and then let's take a look at this 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 dial here now, there's nothing inherently wrong with it, but come on, guys. Ducati has a round gauge that is fully round and actually is round, but this, who, who did the, the square peg in the round hole thing? I mean, why? They took my least favorite motorcycle's gauge and decided that this was a great idea. I, now, there is one thing I will say, it is at least readable because you do have adjustable backlight on it, but there's not enough information there. I mean, the Ducati at least has a tachometer and has everything on it, so that was a good idea. But then, we come back here. This, this, this is one of these things where there's nothing inherently wrong with this thing, but all I could think of is they were at the board meeting and they're like, we're at 28.2 inches, and somebody said, that's still too tall. We want 27 inches, what do we do? Well, they decided that they're gonna fill it with pine cones, wood shavings, and cover it in vinyl and call it good to get that nice thin seat so that you can have that 27.2 inch seat height. So overall, not the most comfortable thing to be riding around on for a long period of time. If you're a season rider, you can do it, but you're still gonna get off with a sore rump. And then we move over here. I mean, not an adjustable suspension set whatsoever, only preload adjusted. We we're at max setting for my bigness, but who put two jelly donuts on the on this point here with the worst possible spring from the worst possible mattress in the universe here? Because this this thing gives a lot too. I mean, they have great suspension travel, but they're too soft as it is. And last but not least, what what board meeting member said? Let's raid the warehouse from the 1980s and find the worst possible lighting grid that we could find and stick it on the back of an otherwise beautiful motorcycle. Oh yeah, and then there's that. Nobody can tell me why that fell off. I mean, I'm still waiting. Honda, why? This is conceivable that this will fall off or be broken because this is for a beginner biker. How come none of your dealers within a 200 mile radius has those? Because those are on multiple different motorcycles and they, they, they don't even have that. And the set screw is still there that holds it in. Where'd the rest of it just go? So, I'm still waiting on that stupid thing to show up. But there's one more thing. Let's get to that. Let's bring on the short people. Alright, so this is my wife. She is five foot two. 
and her legs are roughly a smidge over 27 inches long, maybe 26.8, somewhere in there. Depends on the boot she's wearing. Yeah. Go ahead and climb up on this thing. So, notice the side case. Now, if you're a brand new rider, you want to be hugged up against the tank, but with that being there poking you, that is not going to get you back toward the tank very easily. It will keep your leg a bit further out, dive into your ankle, and cause you to be a little bit more separated. So there is that too. But that's only a very minor, minor complaint. However, the only real way to know how this motorcycle is going to work is if we take it for a ride. Let's go ahead and do that. So here's the thing, not everything is bad on this motorcycle. I know that there's complaints about the suspension, complaints about the brakes, which I actually find to be adequate, not the best, but definitely do bring this bike down to a stop uh, the way they need to, to me. Yeah, they're a little bit off, but not so bad. Like I said, probably designed more for the 300's weight and output versus this one, but Let's be honest here, this is a great engine. This engine was ripped right out of the CBR 500. So this engine does a great job of producing power, slightly retuned so that way it will be more low end. But the chassis is just completely and utterly flickable. The, the way the mirrors are done, they're actually very well um, adjusted for, even a bigger guy like me, I could see plainly and easily out of these mirrors. So I look around, see all the lanes of traffic, see everything behind me, very minimal shoulder and elbow in the, in the picture there. So even though this is a square peg in a round hole, you still get oil, engine light, neutral, temperature uh, warning. Then you got your bright and obviously your single directional light whenever you have that on. You do get a fuel gauge, a digital speedometer, a clock, two trips, and a regular odometer. But you don't get anything else. Like I said, I wish they could have designed this a little bit better on how to, uh, on what to do there. Because I mean, Ducati's got around LCD style. And it actually has tachometer and everything else, so temperature gauges and other things too, so kind of would be nice. The rest of the ergonomics are pretty set, or is pretty standard. You have on the right side your start and stop, a hazard light, and then your starter switch on the very bottom. And then on the left side, you have something that does change a little bit from other motorcycles. You still have your flash, or your pass. If you push down, you get flash the pass. But you also get your horn where the turn signal usually is and then your turn signal on the bottom. Now, when you get up to speed and you're on the highway, this bike does a great job of getting there. It also does a great job of cruising at 70 to 80 miles an hour without much of an issue. Unfortunately, I can't tell you what it's uh, speed or the rev is right now because I don't have a taco. So that's one thing I really wish they would have had on here because some people like to know what the bike is doing. But I could tell you that while riding around with this 2.96 gallon gas tank, everywhere I've been going has pretty much well been highway and kind of a mixed riding, as you saw, I'll sit at a stoplight and then pretty much up on the highway, and that's about all I do on stopping and going. And I'll still be getting about 66, 67 to the gallon. And that's real world numbers. That's me actually being able to do calculations on these tanks. And I've done multiple different tanks because as you can see, I've had this bike for a full 767 miles in this first month of ownership that I've done this. First service is actually at 600 and it's a simple oil change and a chain check to make sure that it's within tolerance. That's the only two things they do on a first service on these motorcycles. So this bike with that CBR 500R engine in it actually accelerates rather briskly uh, faster than a Sportster 883, at least into the 70s, before the 883 finally starts to reel this little guy in. So that's actually very impressive for such a small displacement motorcycle. 46 horsepower, roughly, is what it produces, and that's actually pretty decent and pretty close to what the Sportster does out at 883 cc's, because we have a modern engine. It does actually give the Rebel 
another thing too that's a first for uh, basically any cruiser out of Honda. And that's a six-speed transmission. Up until the um, Rebel came out in 2017, not a single cruiser from Honda had a six-speed. All of them were working with five. This one does it with six, and it's a very good transmission. It shifts very easily, and it's very, very positive feedback. You know what it's doing, and you know what gear you're in. So when you're riding it, you do get a little bit of buzz whenever you're at highway speed cruising between 75, 80 miles an hour. You definitely do feel something, and you see a little bit in the mirrors, as you can see a little bit back there. But it's not terrible. It is something that after an hour and a half of riding, which is pretty much the maximum you can do on one fuel tank, that you'll be able to stand up and you'll shake it off pretty easily. You won't have that pins and needle feeling for very, very long. So the, the really the vibrations are not terrible on this motorcycle whatsoever. So when you're going down the highway, it's perfect for it. It's perfect for going around town too. The chassis is so flickable and the bike is so light, it's easy to go through stop and go traffic. It's super easy to balance. The big fat tires and its presence on the highway is actually very stable. You don't get caught in road ruts. You don't get caught on those little uh, rain troughs that are in the concrete. So that way you stay planted on the highway very firmly. The weight of the motorcycle at 408 pounds allows it to not really be blown around that, that much either. So it's kind of a dream bike whenever you're a newer rider because it's so well balanced and proportioned while on the road that you don't have to worry about anything blowing you around or scaring you. The only thing you gotta worry about is the soft, soft suspension, which sometimes you get a little bit more upset when you're going down the road like these. You'll hear my voice chop a lot as this thing bounces down this road and you can see my head probably shaking a ton because this thing is so softly sprung that it just does not handle the bumps very well at all. And you look at the dive I get when I go into a, a braking and then come back because it is so softly sprung on both sets. But like I said, these are truly just mild gripes about it because overall package anywhere you go with it is fantastic. If you go ahead and spend a little extra money, which I hope to do in the future for you guys, you can upgrade the suspension components inside the fork and on the back with something a little bit better. Maybe buy some piggyback shocks that will help absorb a little bit more and also stiffen up the springs in the forks. So there are things that they can do. Honda did make this a clean sheet motorcycle. So it can be modified, it can be turned into things. They have plastic kits for it that um, you can just change the entire look for it. The, the back fender is held together with only four bolts that you literally just take a second and you can pull the whole fender off, turn it into a bobber. The only thing that is regrettable is why did they not make a turn signal relocation kit so that way you don't run around illegally without a turn signal or even a side license plate mount would have been nice stock on this motorcycle so that way you have your license plate and you can do hand signals or something to at least make you somewhat legal but i mean they made this clean slate for a reason and and it is fantastic so the next question that everybody has is how does it handle in turns how does it handle those well let's run up to my favorite turning area and let's take a look at it there well, I can tell you something about this bike. We've already discussed the suspension being a little bit soft for this thing. But let's be honest here. This new bike, even though it's well new for 2017, this is the first year model bike of this one. It is a fantastic motorcycle in turns like this. It's a motorcycle that I love to take in everywhere. I mean, that is the one thing about a motorcycle and how it should be. It's a bike that you enjoy to take everywhere you go. Not just a city rider, not just a country rider, but one that can do a little bit of everything. And the new Rebel definitely, definitely holds that ability. As you can see, tackling 77 just fine. Yes, we don't have that many turning roads. Yes, we don't have that many abilities, basically. But this particular road is a fantastic way to, to basically take your motorcycle and take it to the road and actually have fun with it. And you can see this bike enjoys this kind of run, this kind of ride. Definitely more fun than the old motorcycle. It has a very good ability to hold its speed. And yeah, you get in those turns. If you're a brand new rider, you might not be as familiar with these bumps and the way it acts with this soft suspension. But if you're used to it, then you know 
that yeah, you'll bounce around, but you know that you'll have the stability to make it all the way through. Just watch your turn, guide your way through it, and come out the other side. And it's a great motorcycle to ride. So, yes, definitely a bike good for the twisties, and definitely a great overall bike. In conclusion, the Rebel 500 is a fantastic motorcycle for both the beginner and the experienced rider. Yes, it has its faults. It definitely has some fit and finish issues. It definitely has a very interesting suspension problem, and the seat could definitely use some adjustment. But the brakes are adequate. The transmission is awesome. The clutch is amazingly smooth. The operation of the motorcycle is extremely simple. The bike is extremely simple itself. No electronic frills to be an overlord upon you. And that 500cc engine is tuned just right to have a lot of fun on tearing up canyon roads or going place to place as an urban brawler. The 500cc Rebel is definitely a motorcycle I will recommend. And it's one that I purchased absolutely blind and I cannot be happier with it. Within a month, I've put roughly 750 some miles on it and still keep on piling more miles as it's become pretty much my daily rider over even my night rod. So this bike definitely has made an impact on me. So if you wanna have fun, spend $6,300, pick up the Rebel 500 and have a great time. At any rate, this is the Rabbit Hedgehog. If you like what I do, subscribe below, hit that bell so that way whenever you see a new video pop up, you can watch it immediately. Also, I do have two ways you can support me. I have the Teespring store, which I'll include a link in there, and also my Patreon page as well. I just got done setting that up completely for everybody so that way the rewards and the categories are set up so you can take a look. And if you definitely like what I do, support this channel. We'll keep it growing. We'll keep everything where we can uh, have more fun. And we'll definitely get more reviews out for you and better content as time goes on. So keep that shiny side up. And you all have a good one.